the female artists in the world, having sold something like 50 million albums. But her distinctive vocal talent and the sheer power of her haunting Celtic melodies have found her in great demand in Hollywood, where her music is featured in movies like the Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman romance, Far and Away, and Martin Scorsese's Age of Innocence. Now she has a brand new single to hit the record shops very soon, and I'm delighted that she's found the time to join us this afternoon. So I know you'll give a very special welcome to Enya. <laughs> It's really very nice to catch up with you again. Our paths cross about every sort of five or six years, I think. It, it does, it does. <laughs> yeah. This is the first time, though, that, uh, that you've been in the studio, in a studio-based album, for a couple of years now, isn't it? For five years. Five years, yes, gosh. It is. So why is that? Well, what has happened was with the memory trees, that was five years ago, and I went on a very long promotional trip. And then in between, I worked on the best of album, Paint the Sky with Stars, and there were two new tracks to write for that, and then another promotional trip for that. So um, on this album, it was two years on working on it. To some people, that's a long time, but to me, that's as long as it took. Are you an absolute perfectionist when it comes to laying down the tracks and perfecting your music? Well, I think, to me, it's important, you know, the end result, that it's what I'm happy with. And so that's really the priority always for me. But this album, I'm told, has just gone in a bananas in every country you can think of inside a very short time. So you must be pleased. It has. I'm, I'm very pleased, absolutely. I have to say that when I work on an album, I do kind of isolate myself from, you know, the pressure of um, the success from the other albums. And I do it so well that it's like it's always my first album, you know? And I kind of enjoy that, but it, because of that, you know, your kind of your anticipation is of, you know, will anybody listen to the music? <laughs> so, of course, I'm delighted with the reaction. Now, where are you at musically at the moment? Like, where is your mind in terms of what you want to achieve or the feel that you want to create? I always like to feel that I'm progressing, you know, that what I've done, you know, a few years back, that I'm not looking to repeat that. And that's where I forget the success. I feel that I've got to kind of set myself a challenge musically each time I work you know, on an album. And I really, I love music so much and I just want to be really happy with what I'm working on. And I always like that, you know, anything can happen in the studio. So know? what would you say the conclusion of this album was? You know, if you had to analyze it and say, what is the conclusion then of this period or this album and the two years that I've put mm. into it? It's, it's a very positive album because that's where I am at at the moment. You know, it's very reflective of who I am, you know, the music, because I write the music, I perform the music, so... I love the title, by the way, A Day Without a Name. That's a very positive <laughs> title in itself, isn't it? Yeah, because it's, it, you can take it literally for what it means, but you can interpret your own thoughts to that title, of which I like. I want to talk a little bit about Ireland, because I remember when I was working on BBC in Northern Ireland and playing the records in, we used to always talk about your music, your family music, in terms of a basis of classical and folk mm -hmm. and jazz, and it was a bit of everything. And would you say that that's what stood you in great stead, the fact that you have this wide understanding of music? Absolutely, because I come from, as you know, a musical family, and what my parents have given me is a great love of music, because, you know, where I come from in, you know, County Donegal in the Gaeltart area, speaking Gaelic as a first language. There's a lot of Irish traditional music in that area. But then my father, who toured with his band, they played sort of Glenn Miller type of songs and Irish ballads. And then my mother is a music teacher, so she introduced me to classical music. So growing up, hearing all this diverse music, I think, was great. And, and as you say, the Irish language, the Gaelic, is not actually spoken in that many areas of Ireland no. proportionately. What I find fascinating is the fact that your music in Gaelic goes worldwide. Mm. And, you know, people may not even at times understand what it's all about or what the words actually say, but they accept it and they love it. They do, they do. But I think that's to do with um, the emotional content within the song, you know, they seem to be able to relate to it, no matter what language, because I sing in Latin and, I, you know... It's I fascinating that, though, that people can pick up on the emotion immediately it without is. actually technically understanding the words. I mean, in a different vein altogether, Julio does the same thing in, in Spanish, mm -hmm. because he people, does. like, love the Spanish records without really knowing what the songs mean. Yeah, so I think people just pick up on that sort of emotional mm. content within the music, yeah. Now, in, in your... Private life, I don't mean private, private, but in terms of where you're living, I gather that you're renovating a castle no less in Ireland. 
It's uh, restoring uh, uh, an old castle. Um, there had been a fire there. In, it's, it's an old castle, it's 1840, but there was a fire there in 1924, and um, I'm bringing it back to... It's a Victorian castle, so I'm bringing it back to... How many what rooms did you do you have? Um, there's a lot of rooms there, I but we're talking I about 20, say, 40 or what? No, no, I have to say it is very much a small castle. You know, when it's not a, a castle with very big ballrooms and, you know, um, masses of sort of bedrooms. It's very much a home, and that's why I fell in love with it. And um, I'm just in the process of just finishing um, the Are you enjoying that? Is that a great release? To it is, but it's, it's been very interesting, you know, because, like, uh, looking up what um, it should look like and bringing it back to what, you know, it would have looked like at that time. It's, it's been very interesting, you know. So when will you move into it, do you think? Uh, it'll be spring. Of, been, how yeah, lovely, though. Because uh, I'd be still promoting this album up to then. So. Are you amused sometimes when they call you recluse? They'll call you now the recluse in the castle. <laughs> Because that's not true. No, it's just that what I do is when I do promotion work for the album, I spend a lot of time doing, you know, uh, television work and radio and press. But then I feel there's a time where, you know, I have to get back to living what I call a, a normal lifestyle. Sure. And it's important to me. And I just think, you know, like, for... Um, I think for the paparazzi, they find it a little bit too normal and, you know, it's not sensationalist stories, so they don't write about me, you know, so it's... And it suits me fine because it's... I think it's important to me musically to be able to get back to my roots, you know, get back sure. to family and friends and living And the emotion life. of all of that, really. Mm. Well, we're going to hear the new single, thankfully, yes. which I'm looking forward to enormously. Um, what, what's the feel of this one in terms of content? The, the song is called Wild Child, but it's actually about a day how unpredictable a day can be. And you get up in the morning and you have sort of plans made, but it can go any way. And that's really the, the theme of the song. Well, I'm going to let you join uh, at least part of your band today and that gorgeous white piano over there. So, <laughs> okay. Henry, thank you very much thank indeed. You thank you very much. Thank you. Would you like to get another one? Well, of course, for us, it's always a great treat to have music in the house. And here with a new single, as you just heard it mentioned, it's called Wild Child, by the way. It comes from the album A Day Without Rain, and we're delighted to say she's at the piano, all organised. So once again, we're, let's hear it for Enya. the rain 
Dr. Rogers, thank you very much. Thank you. That was really fabulous. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. I just love this white piano, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, many thanks to Enya and all the girls here. And as she's contributed a lot uh, of music to films, I know that you'd be interested in Monday's show because we're going to meet legendary cameraman and director Jack Cardiff. He has lit gorgeous women like Marilyn Monroe, Ava Gardner and Sophia Lawrence. So we'll see you Monday. Have a wonderful weekend from all of us. Bye-bye.